It's an R3 boxing. I'm back with a quick video. Um, Luis Colazo just knocked the fuck out of Sammy Vasquez. Um, I actually forgot that this fight was going on. So um, I had to quickly catch it. And I enjoyed the fight. My Luis Colazo came to fight. And he really got Sammy, uh, Sammy Vasquez out of there. He dropped Sammy Vasquez, I think, uh, around two or around four, maybe. I can't re really remember, but it, w it was a competitive fight. But there was that knockdown that Louis Colazo was producing. He produced one uh, uh, kind of like in the fight, and then he got up the other guy. Louis Colazo was man. He threw some nice body. Sh like I remember, there was a combination where he threw some nice punch uh, punch variation, like body shots and shit. Colazo's got some nice heavy hands, bro. Like he's got some heavy hands and. Uh, I actually like Colazo as a fighter. I never thought he was like a bum. Like a lot of people refer to him as a bum, at least before the fight. Because he lost to Keith Thurman, he lost to Mech. He lost he lost a, a lot of um top top fighters. But you know the thing is about Colazo, he's not really a top top fighter like that, but he's uh, just a bit below that. And Luis Colazo can give a lot of lot of good fighter problems, a lot of them. Every, all, pretty much everyone he steps into the ring with, 90% or more, he'll give major problems. He's seriously underrated, because the thing about Luis Colazo, yeah? He, yeah, he's not the fastest fighter out there, but, you know, when he throws combination, he's not the slowest. He, he, I mean, he's got, he's not, he's not a fast fighter, but he's got, um, what makes him not too slow? He's got good timing. Like he can time it well. Um, I don't think he's as slow as people think. He's got really good timing. He's got pretty decent head movement. He's a, he's tough. Luis Colazo is tough. He could take shots. I remember in round two against uh, round three, I believe maybe or round two, Colazo was walking through Thurman at one point. Like technically walking through. Yeah, he was a bit covered up and whatnot, but he was walking through him. And um, Colazo is a tough guy, bro. He's took um he's somehow he can he's crafty in there. He's like he's very crafty, he's kinda clever, he's not a dumb fighter that just comes forward now. Man, Colazo's a good fighter. He's one of the better fighters at 147. And 147 is filled with a lot of good fighters. So yeah, man, I, I was really I really enjoyed the fight. I really enjoyed watching the fight. I initially did not know the fight was gonna go on. I mean it was gonna go on, but I forgot it was today. Like and um yeah let, let me know what you think of the fight i actually uh, the one thing i found it hilarious there were some um boxing channels even that said sammy sammy vasquez is like really good and everything like i remember those i don't want to mention the names but sammy vasquez apparently according to them would beat errol spence <laughs> i mean i get errol spence like has a lot of hype as well on him but I feel like some of it is legitimate hype. Like he did knock out Chris Algeria, which American couldn't and Manny Pacquiao couldn't. The American, uh, American fought Chris Algeria, which was a better version than Manny Pacquiao. But at the same time, you know, he fought uh, Chris Algeria for Aerosmith after American. So it was an impressive win. I felt like it was a very impressive win. He did to Aerosmith, he did to sorry, Chris Algeria, no one else has done. And Leonard Bondo ain't really a top fighter, but at the same time, Leonard Bondo is like, he fought Keith Thurman and Keith Thurman technically, he won every single round but I feel like even though Errol Spence, like Errol Spence got, got him out of there, even though like the rounds leading up to that, uh, I feel like it was a bit more competitive than the Keith Thurman, like because Keith Thurman and Leonard Bondo, all the rounds were like, it was one-sided but like Keith Thurman couldn't get him out of there, Leonard, Leonard Bondo versus uh, Errol Spence, it was it was more competitive, but until the knockout, like until the stoppage, which was a brutal stoppage. Um, yeah. So, sa sa this, is what I, this is one of the examples that I'm talking about fighters <coughs> that um, hype train. Do you see what I'm, this is what I mean by hype trains? A lot of fighters look good, man. A lot of fighters look great. But what happens when you step up? What happens when you step up levels? Can you still do the same thing that you did against these low level oppositions? I guess not. I guess this guy couldn't. And you know, I'm not disrespecting him or nothing, but obviously he's a fighter that's willing to fight the best and whatnot. But see, this is what, and this is why I, I want fighters to fight top fighters.
Mikhail Brook. This is the re- like he's doing all the shit. He's undefeated. Sammy Vargas might ended up being undefeated if he didn't fight these fighters that gave him the loss, right? But does that mean he's a go- he would have been a good fighter? No. This is why I want fighters to fight the best. And Luis Colazo just showed, man, he, he he can hang in there with some good fighters. And also, he called out Sean Porter. This, was, this is interesting because... Um, I feel like he gave Sean Porter a, good, a really good fight, even though a lot of people disagree with me, with me on that. I always felt like Sean Porter was a bit overrated. He could win the fight, but I feel like Luis Calazo has a bit more skills than Sean Porter. But that's really all I have to say, man. Now, let me know what you think. Let me know uh, who would win against Sean Porter versus Luis Calazo. And also let me know if you think Sean Porter will actually take the fight. I'm SR93 Boxing. I'm out.